With most of the reactions we've looked at this year, we've only really considered them going in one direction, the reactants turning into a product. Many reactions, however, are reversible. This chapter and a number of the following chapters are going to deal with the concept of equilibrium, the balance between a forward and a reverse reaction. As we saw in the last chapter, the concentrations of your reactants will change over time. Generally, you consume your reactants to make products. So as a reaction proceeds, the amount of reactants will decrease and the amount of products will increase. The rates of reactions are dependent on the concentration. So as you consume your reactants, the rate of your forward reaction generally decreases. As you make more product, the rate of your reverse reaction will increase. Equilibrium occurs when the rates of these reactions balance out. You are making product just as quickly as you're turning it back into reactant. In other words, the concentrations of your reactants and products stop changing. It doesn't mean the reactions are over. It just means that any progress being made by the forward reaction is being undone by the reverse reaction. This is what is meant by a dynamic equilibrium. The processes are still occurring, we just don't measure any differences. An important tool when working with these dynamic equilibria are called equilibrium expressions. We use these to predict whether a system is at equilibrium or not. Let's look at this reaction. We're combining nitrogen and hydrogen to make ammonia. The equilibrium expression is equal to K, and so I'm going to say KEQ, the constant of equilibrium. And it equals the concentration of ammonia squared divided by the concentration of nitrogen times the concentration of hydrogen cubed. Now this resembles a rate law in some ways, but this is a different expression. Yes, the square brackets mean concentration, just like they did in last chapter. And yes, there are exponents. But we don't have to find these exponents experimentally. The exponents come directly from the balanced equation. The concentration ammonia is squared because there's a coefficient of two in the balanced equation. The concentration of nitrogen doesn't have an exponent, or the exponent is one, more correctly, because the coefficient of nitrogen is one and the concentration of hydrogen is cubed because the coefficient for hydrogen is cubed. So we can get these exponents directly from the balanced equation. And we always write them by putting the products on top and the reactants on the bottom. So again, when you see those square brackets, it's referring to concentration, and we generally measure our concentrations in molarity. That K is a constant, and so this is referred to as an equilibrium constant. The constant is temperature dependent because we know that rates of reactions are temperature dependent. By changing a temperature, you can change the rates of both the forward and the reverse reaction and change the equilibrium. There are units for the equilibrium constant. We just tend to ignore them. And as I said before, we always do products over reactants. So take a moment, you can pause the video, and write the equilibrium expression for this process. I'm not going to hum or whistle here. I guess I could import some appropriate waiting music. Hopefully, your equilibrium expression looks something like this. Your equilibrium constant, K, is going to equal your concentration of hydrogen squared times the concentration of oxygen divided by the concentration of water squared. We always do products over reactants, and the exponents come from the coefficients in the balanced equation. So our equilibrium expressions always follow this generic pattern. All right, let's look at a problem. Let's take sulfur dioxide and turn it into sulfur trioxide by adding oxygen. I let this reaction come to equilibrium, and I measure the concentrations of sulfur trioxide, sulfur dioxide, and oxygen. I would like to know what the equilibrium constant is for this reaction at whatever temperature this was done at. So I begin by writing my equilibrium expression. KEQ is going to equal my product, sulfur trioxide, squared, all over my reactants, sulfur dioxide, squared, times my oxygen. And now I just have to plug in my values because I'm told we're at equilibrium. So my sulfur trioxide is 0 0.045 squared, divided by my sulfur dioxide, which is 0 0.018 squared times my oxygen, 0.011. And when I do this, I get 568, two sig figs. I could say 570 is my equilibrium constant.